they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for what does the Bible say. Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Word from the Lord. Glad you're watching. I know the phone lines were lit up from the previous uh, program. What does the Bible say? Well, Mark and Micah, and uh, we'll open the phone lines up for you uh, during the course of this program, and we'll let you get some phone calls in. I know they were trying to get some information to you, some vital information, and I, I believe that it was uh, very important and uh, hope that you were at least getting to see something that uh, uh, caught, made you think about, you know, what kind of people are we really dealing with who call themselves Christians. Friends, we are striving, I know contrary to popular uh, belief, popular statements sometimes, but we are striving for unity. And if you will examine the Church of Christ that's meeting in your area, if you're in Eden at 250 the Boulevard, uh, my phone number is 276-340-2653, or you can reach me at 336-394-5721. But if you're looking for some uh, group of individuals who are striving to get back to the Bible, the Church of Christ is where you need to be. There was a young man down in Texas who uh, had a discussion with one of his co-workers and uh, his co-worker said, I'm looking for some place that will teach the Bible. And he said, well, you need to find the Church of Christ then if you're looking for some place that will get back to teaching you the Bible. And it caused a big ruckus amongst uh, his, his co-workers, but it was the truth. It was indeed the truth that, that uh, uh, if you're looking for someone who will teach you the Bible, uh, get to the, uh, uh, the, the Church of Christ because we're the ones who are trying to give you a Bible answer for why we believe what we believe, and so I don't know who this is calling me, but uh, if you're watching, I'm not taking my calls right now. So, uh, but, but but nonetheless, uh, but nonetheless, if you're looking for a place to study God's word, this is where you can find it. If you're in Danville or or Martinsville, you can go to 823 Starling Avenue in Martinsville, or you can meet at 120 American Legion in Danville, and those individuals there will certainly. Uh, greet you warmly and you'll be a friend and you will certainly be given an opportunity to ask a Bible question about anything that was said or that was done contrary to what you'll find in other places. So tonight we want you to know that we are looking to have something in common with you. You know in the Bible, in the Bible it does talk about individuals having things in common. They have things in common. In Jude 3, Jude says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered. Now notice this. He was going to write about the common salvation. Now, when, when he writes about the common salvation, it's because it was something that everybody had who was in the same religious group as he was. It was common. They had all things in common. They had this in common, and that was a common salvation. What made it common was the fact that it was a it was the universal norm, if you will. It was the norm for what you uh, uh, were taught, or what you believed, or what you had obeyed when you obeyed the gospel, when you obeyed a form of doctrine. Romans six, verse sixteen and seventeen. So that's why the word "common" is used. They had things in common. In Titus one, verse four, to Titus, my own son, after the common faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father uh, and Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. So, uh, uh, private number, apparently someone's trying to, I don't know, I hate the evil surmise, but it's probably a prank call. You can answer it if you, if you want to. But notice, common faith, common salvation, common faith. 
They had something in common. It was something that they had in agreement with you, you might say. Now, why can't we have something in common together, friends? If you are in the Baptist church, the Methodist church, the Lutheran church, the Catholic church, the Presbyterian church, or even uh, uh, some uh, uh, far off the wall uh, church that no one's ever heard of, if you want to have something in common with us, why can't we? Why can't we have something in common with you? We want to have something in common with you. That is actually what's going to help us to walk together. In Amos 3 and verse 3, the Bible says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? And that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to show you that we want to have something in common, and that is a common salvation and a common belief. We want, it to, we want you to be able to say, I have something in common with James, and that is the salvation, that we have the same salvation, that we have the same uh, belief, that we're walking by the same rule, and that we're minding the same thing. Notice this. In Philippians, let's see if we can get here, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 16, Paul says, Nevertheless, whereto have we already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Let's have something in common. Let's walk by those same rules. Now, here's my question to you, friends, is can we really have something in common? Can we really have something in common? Or do you really just want to have something similar? And do you really want to just kind of have some, well, kind of like uh, things in common? Or do you really want to have what the Bible says, things in common? Listen to this. In, in uh, today's, today's religious world, the religious uh, community seems to only want to focus on the similarities. Now, this article that appeared in the Martinville Bulletin some years ago, but it's still pertinent today because the idea is still being uh, uh, perpetuated in the religious world. And here's the title. Should Christians focus on similarities or differences? Or should they focus on similarities, not differences? Look, here's some similarities. Similarities means it's kind of like. They're kind of the same, but they're not exactly the same. Listen, boots and tennis shoes have some similarities. They both go on your feet, but they're not the same. They are different. When you're talking about what the Bible says and the church you find in the Bible, friends, you don't need to settle for similarities. You need to look for the exact same things, the things they have in common. That's what we're talking about. We don't need to settle for similarities. We need to have things in common. So the question is, is similar close enough to having things in common? In other words, can you have things in common like they did in the first century, the common salvation or the common faith, even if you're just similar in some things? I want you to notice. I want you to notice something about this article. This article was written, this article was written by a, uh, uh, by a Methodist, and it's also, this also is a forum that actually uh, is, uh, pres the president is a Baptist, I believe, and there's also going to be a, a Presbyterian writing. Now, here's my question. Are Baptists, Methodists, and Presbyterians so similar that they can say they have all things common? Are they similar enough that they can say that they have the common salvation and they're following the common faith that they are walking by the same rule and minding the same things are they common with each other or are they just similar and is their similarities enough to make them get along listen this article is written by excuse, this is the one that's written by the Presbyterian Randall C. Stevens pastor of the first Presbyterian church in Martinsville now notice this he is in a ministerial alliance with uh, the Oak Level Baptist Church. Now, is the Oak Level Baptist Church and the Presbyterian Church, are they similar enough to get along? Are they similar enough to where they can say we have the same common salvation and we have the same common faith and we're walking by the same rule, we're minding the same thing, we will be into the same form of doctrine? Are they similar enough to be able to say that? Friends, I say they're not. I say they're not, and the very fact that they're separate shows that they're not. Shows that they're not because they can't all come together and preach the same thing 
in all churches like Paul did in First Timothy, excuse me, First Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter uh, four and verse seventeen. Notice this: For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring unto you remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, I know that the Presbyterians and the Baptists can't preach the same thing every time they come together because they are not following the same rule. Friends, come on, we can think together, we can reason together. Now, notice this. Also, in the From the Pulpit section, you have, we have an article here from uh, uh, Linda Wolf, an assistant pastor of the First United Methodist Church in Martinsville. Now, again, the question, are the Baptists, the Methodists, and the Presbyterians, are they so similar that they can get along and teach the same thing? I say they're not. I say they're not, and here's a good example. You see, the Methodists and the Baptists will differ on baptism. Now, who is going to give in when, they come, when it comes down to teaching this? You know, there's a lot of Baptists and Methodists in this area that get together, and they pretend to have something in common. They don't have anything in common. They have some similarities, but they don't have the common faith or the common salvation, and they don't walk by the same rule. They don't mind the same thing. They don't speak the same thing. They're not of the same mind of the same judgment, 1 Corinthians 1, 10, with each other. Therefore, they can't really get along. Notice this. This is an article that was written by the Baptist about the Methodist. Now, notice this. One of the customs held and upheld by Pedo Baptist, that is people, that is Baptist, who, that people who baptize children. Pedo is child, children. Pedo Baptist churches, which Baptists seriously condemn, is infant baptism. Now, notice, seriously condemned. Oh, that's a very harsh judgment, you Baptist folks. I can't believe you do that. You mean to tell me you got something in common with someone that you will seriously condemn? Their article goes on, and yet it is not instituted by Christ, that is infant baptism, it's not instituted by Christ, nor practiced by his apostles, nor known in the primitive churches, and has neither sanction nor recognition in the word of God. Friends, that's exactly the standard that we're looking for. See, if we're all going to walk by the same rule and mind the same thing and have a common salvation and a common faith, then we're going to have to start using the common standard. That is this standard that the Baptists are using to find out whether the Methodists are actually practicing something that is scriptural or not. They say it's not known. It wasn't not instituted by Christ. It wasn't practiced by his apostles. It wasn't known by the early churches. And it was not sanctioned in the word of God. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what we're saying. If you want to find out if you have something in common with the church of Christ, the church you read about in the Bible, you need to find out if what you're doing is instituted by Christ, practiced by the apostles, known by the early churches, or sanctioned by the word of God. You need to find that. That is biblical authority. I know that's a strange word to a lot of folks, authority. But you know what? That's what it gets down to. Do you have authority? Notice this. Since it doesn't, here's what they conclude. It is for this reason that Baptist utterly rejects and condemn the custom and not simply useless and without authority, but as a most pernicious and hurtful usage. Look, they're condemning it. They're condemning it. And they're not, they're not saying, well, it's just something that you can just do, you don't have authority for. They say, no, not only do you not have authority for, it is pernicious, it's terrible. And it is harmful. Now, that is a bold uh, uh, condemnation about a practice that the Methodists engage in. Now, Methodists, do you really think your Baptist neighbor over there really uh, is speaking the truth, that he's speaking from the heart when he says, oh, yeah, we have something in common? You have something in common and you might come together on the first day of the week. But after that, it kind of starts falling apart, friends. You may have something in common as in the, well, we, we both have a piano, but after that, it starts falling apart. When it comes down to doing what the Bible says, finding sanction in the word of God, finding apostolic or divine authority for why you do what you do, you're going to start realizing pretty soon you're going to start falling apart when it comes to having things in common with everybody else. You see, the Baptists and the Methodists don't have this in common. As a matter of fact, look, let's read what the Methodists say. Now, the Methodists, when it comes to baptism, say, now, 
What now of the mode of baptism? There are three principal modes, immersion, sprinkling, and pouring. The Methodist discipline, in a preface to paragraph 1910, recognizes and authorizes all three modes. Now, wait a minute. The Baptist just condemned the Methodist for, for practicing something that's not authorized, does not have sanction. It was instituted by Christ or practiced by the apostles in the Word of God. And here in their book, they say, well, you know what? We authorize all three modes. And here's what they say. Let every adult person and the parents of every child to be baptized have the choice of sprinkling, pouring, or immersion. Now, wait a minute. The Baptists are condemning not only, they won't actually, they, they not only will condemn the act of pouring and sprinkling, but they're going to actually condemn the Methodists for baptizing the children too. Now, here's three things in this one paragraph that the Methodists and Baptists are not going to have in common. Friends, can you actually say that the Methodists and Baptists then have the same, some, have a faith in common, salvation in common? See? Okay. They don't have a common salvation. They don't have a common faith. They don't walk by the same rule. They don't mind the same things. They're not speaking the same things. They don't mind the same judgment. That's why if they came together and were to preach on on salvation and the mode of baptism, they'd have some, all kinds of discrepancies. They'd have all kinds of contradictions, you see? And we know, friends, that it is the case that baptisms, their baptism may be similar in the sense of they all will immerse, but the Methodists will give you two more options. Now, that may be similar, but that's not common. That's not the common faith that you read about in the Bible. And I know, friends, I know that you can see the difference. I know that you will agree, and I know that you, if you're going to be honest with yourself, are going to admit, yes, you're right. Baptists and Methodists are not right. And if you're a Baptist and honest with yourself, you're going to say the Methodists are wrong. You're going to do exactly what many people say we shouldn't do, but you're going to judge, and you're going to say, yeah, the method is wrong. And here's a good example. Here's a young man that's going to call in and say so that, that the Methodists are wrong and the Baptists are right. Listen to what he says. Uh, I'm currently in attendance with the Baptist Church. I'm in fellowship with them. that desire. He said, I've not done this before. Over. This is the first time I'm doing this in this missionary. Let me start over. Uh, I'm currently in attendance with the Baptist Church. I'm in fellowship with Blessed Hope, in fact. Why are you? Why am I? Yeah, doesn't the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God? You didn't hear God say for you to be in a Baptist Church. Why are you over there? Just for the community, let us know. Because the word of the Lord is being preached there appropriately. Well, not, it doesn't tell you about the Baptist church. First thing, rattle out the box, you're inside of a building with people who claim to be God's people, and they don't even have a designation or an, an, an authority to exist. They claim to be Christians. Well, they can claim to be Christians. Jehovah's Witnesses claim to be Christians. Do you accept them? I mean, your church claims to be Christians. Uh-uh, uh, sir. Do you, do, you claim, do you accept the Jehovah's Witness? No, but we can try the spirits based on the Word of God. Okay, I'm trying y'all's spirit. And I'm well, asking you as a Baptist, or you'd recognize him as a Methodist. Oh, oh, you, we're Methodist. playing games, sir. You know that you adhere to Baptist doctrine, and they adhere to Methodist doctrine, but you're trying to pretend like it don't concern you. No, my father's in attendance with the church that was formerly a Methodist church, but they realized that they weren't strong on the doctrine, so oh, Christian sir. church now. No, sir, I just can't believe that you said that. My I, can't, I can't believe that you said that. You said that they are they realized they weren't strong with the doctrine. Is that another way to say that they were wrong? Well sure, of course. You said that they are they realized they weren't strong with the doctrine. Is that another way to say that they were wrong? Well sure. You said that they are they realized they weren't strong with the doctrine. Is that another way to say that they were wrong? Well sure. Now, you have just admitted that the Methodist Church is wrong. No, I'm saying that the church that my father was with spoke. Formerly a Methodist. Right. Formerly a Methodist. You can't use one body to speak for the entirety. Okay, well, that particular Methodist church realized, God be thanked, that they were wrong. Is that right? That they just didn't stand for, for instance, sprinkling. Okay, all right. Now, now, sir, I am so thrilled that you said that because I'm in agreement with you that sprinkling is not New Testament baptism. But guess what? 
The Baptists refuse to preach what Peter and Paul preached. I've never met a Baptist preacher, including yours, that would actually say, when somebody said, men and brethren, what must we do? Peter responded, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Now, will your preacher preach that? Not for the repentance of sins, no. That's a, that's a law concept. Oh, my. Well, what difference does it make if you sprinkle then? If it doesn't matter why you're going to be baptized, just go ahead and sprinkle. I can't believe you'd argue over if it's just a law concept anyway. Now, see, friends, here's the thing. He recognized that he didn't have th something in common with the Methodists because they were wrong on the doctrine. Now, why is it that we can't all just look at each other and what we all believe, what we all practice, what we all teach, and say, you know what? You, you're wrong on the doctrine. You're wrong on the doctrine when it comes to the plan of salvation. You're wrong on the doctrine when it comes to how you worship in, 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 uh, uh, in, in, in uh, the Lord in the assembly. You're wrong on how you worship. You're wrong on what you teach. You're wrong, wrong on the organization. Why can't you just look at each other and say, you know what? Let's go back to the Bible and find out what's right and wrong, see what's sanctioned, in the Bible, see what's authorized in the Bible, and let's just do that, and then we have all things in common. But instead, we want to say, well, that's just a difference that doesn't really matter. Well, does it matter or does it not matter? This young man recognized that it did matter to a degree. It did matter because he was going to condemn the Baptist for it. But see, the problem is people really don't want to do what God says. They really don't want to strive for that unity and that common faith that we should all have. How do I know? Because they explain away the differences this way. They explain away the differences and say, well, that's not really important. We still have a common salvation in the fact that we believe Jesus Christ. Now, here's a Baptist preacher, Tim Whitehart, who's going to say that very thing, that doctrines don't and methods don't really matter because what it matters, what brings you the common salvation, is your belief in Christ. Here you I go. believe the way I believe because I believe the Bible teaches that. However, these things that I'm talking about, how many still with me this morning say amen? All these names are non essential for salvation. They have nothing to do with salvation. It's just methods, modes, difference. Thus, you have different denominations. That's why a lot of these different denominations were set up because of the different methods. Some a little different doctrine on certain things. But you know what? By and large, most of the people that you believe, that you run into, and a lot of these churches I'm talking about around here believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes through the Father but by Jesus. Amen? How many still with me? All right, see? It really doesn't matter. Just difference in methods, whatever. That's, that's no big deal. What really matters is the common thing. The one common thing we all believe Jesus is the Son of God. You know what? That's not the common salvation. That is not the common faith. That is not having all things in common, walking by the same rule, minding the same things. That's not being of the same mind and the same judgment. Having one thing in common, having everything in common, speaking the same thing in all churches, that is how you have the common salvation. See, it does matter about doctrines, friends. It does matter about what you teach, and it does matter what you believe, contrary to what, you, what your preacher may say. You know down deep in your heart, you don't want to believe what someone else is teaching when it's contrary to what you believe. You think they're wrong. Now, I know people say, well, it doesn't really matter to me, but it does matter to you. And if you'll be honest with yourself, you know that you believe you're right. You know that you believe you're right. You know you believe you're the only one going to heaven. Otherwise, you wouldn't put up a big fuss and fight about someone else saying, no, 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 you know, that church is not right. If you believe that we were all part of the body of Christ, and that we all had the common salvation, it wouldn't bother you for to hear me say what I say about the one true church in the Bible. It wouldn't bother you at all. See, what gets you is the fact that you believe you're right, but you just don't have the courage to say it. You just don't have the courage to say, no, 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 no. The Baptist church is the only church in the Bible. I would to God if there was a Baptist preacher that had the courage, the intestinal fortitude, the guts, to stand up and say the Baptist church is the only church in the Bible, and I can prove it. I wish there was someone that would at least have the courage to say it, because you know you really believe it. So you know you really believe it. 
And here's why I know that you believe that doctrines do matter if you're going to have the common salvation. This is why I know that you will agree with me that there is some importance on doctrines. Listen, if differences are okay in order to have a common salvation, in other words, you can have some similarities, and that's what we're going to focus on, then what about the Mormons similarity? You know, the, the Mormons, they're, they're similar in a lot of ways to you Baptist, Methodist, Lutherans, Presbyterians, and so forth. Yeah, y'all, yeah, yeah, you're similar. You know, they're similar to the Seventh-day Adventists. And they're similar, they're similar to the uh, Baptists. They, they immerse. See, you got some similarities there. Oh, but man, y'all going to run. Y'all going to run like a scalded dog from the, from the Mormons. Y'all don't want any, to anything to do with the Mormons. Y'all don't want to address, acknowledge, or even think about acknowledging the similarities that you have with the Mormons. You know why? Because you know that differences do matter. You know that differences means you don't have something in common with them. You won't admit that you have something in common with them. And here's why. Because you know doctrines matter. In Galatians 1, 6-7, Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now the reason why, the reason why you know or why you say the Mormons are not right is because they have a different doctrine. Well, wait a minute. It's similar, isn't it? They call it a testament, another testament of Jesus Christ. Well, the book you use is the testament of Jesus Christ. It's similar, right? Hey, it's similar. It talks about the church in the Book of Mormon. It talks about Jesus in the Book of Mormon. It talks about apostles in the Book of Mormon. See, it's similar. Now, why won't you accept that similarity? Are you going to focus on that similarity? You'll focus on it, but you'll focus on it to condemn it because you know it's not right. See, friends, we're getting you to think. And you know that to have the common salvation, it's not enough just to focus on similarities. You've got to focus on everything to make sure everything is sanctioned by the Word of God, to make sure everything is in its right place. That's why Paul gave the command in 1 Timothy 1, verse 3. He said, As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, talking to Timothy, and notice what he said, I sought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou might have charged some that they teach no other doctrine. Sound to me like Paul was concerned about something just a little more than similarities. He was concerned that someone would come on and teach another doctrine. Now Tim Hodder says, well, it's just a doctrine. As long as they believe Jesus, they're all right. Why didn't he tell Paul, Peter, uh, Timothy that? Why didn't Paul tell Timothy, I left you at Ephesus when I went to Macedonia, and, you know... Just charge some that they just believe in Jesus Christ. It doesn't really matter what else they teach. Paul was constantly warning uh, people about false teachers coming in to teach another doctrine, making shipwreck of the faith, teaching some that there, that the, that there is no resurrection, that the dead don't rise, don't rise again, 1 Corinthians 15. He's always talking about some other doctrine. It sounds to me like Paul wasn't concerned about similarities. He was concerned about someone coming in and changing the common salvation and the common faith. But see, these churches, these churches of men that you're a member, that you're a member of and that you're part of, friends, here's what concerns me. What concerns me is they are not part of the common faith, the common salvation. They're not walking by the same road. They're not minding the same thing. And that's why you can't speak the same thing in all those different churches. Because they really don't have anything in common. The only thing they have in common is a few similarities. See? I will say this. Now I'm going to change my mind. They do have something in common. These churches of men, these churches of men that are out here, Telling you that you're okay where you are, that you just believe Jesus and you'll be saved. You just say a little prayer and you'll be all right. That once saved, always saved, and you're okay. That you can be sprinkled and have a little water flung on you and you'll be, you'll be saved. That if you were baptized as an infant, you'll be all right. They'll tell you that, yeah, if you've been married a seven, 70 times, seven times, and the blood of Christ took care of it all. 
Just go out and live like you want to do. They'll tell you that's all right. But you know what? Here's what they do have in common. Here's what they have in common. They have this in common. I want you to listen to this. This is just going to be about three or four preachers. But listen to what they say, and this is what they have in common. See if you pick up on it. See if you'll pick up on what they, what they all have in common. Right here. But I know that if I will just be obedient to God, that's why, listen to me, that's why I never, 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 never answer my email. I'm not going to do it. Y'all can tell me to all day. I won't do it. Jackie Poe from Mercy Crawford. Because God is my, he'll take care of that. Okay, let's take it. Good evening. You're on Expect a Miracle. Uh, yes, um, I have a question for Jackie. Okay. Jackie. Do you believe that a Christian can lose his salvation? Well, I tell you what, I'm not really going to even even go to that issue. Mm -hmm. I just believe that if you want to live for God, you can live for God. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to live for God, you you know you can go a different direction. That just, that's what the bottom line is. Amen. Thank you for calling. That didn't answer my question, though. Well, that, that's that's the answer right there. I'm not going to get into any that's contention. Like it, Amen. I'm Thank you for calling. No, we're not going to get, in, gonna get into that tonight. No. This is, this is a... So let, let's take this yeah. call. Okay, let's take it. Good evening. You're on Expect a Miracle. Uh, yes. Um, I have a question for Jackie. Okay. Jackie, do yeah. you believe that a Christian can lose his salvation? Well, I tell you what, I'm not really going to even, even go to that issue. Mm -hmm. I just believe... That if you want to live for God, you can live for God. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to live for God, you, you know, you can go a different direction. That just, Amen. That's what the bottom line is. Amen. Thank you for calling. That didn't answer my question, though. Well, that, that's, that's the answer right there. I'm not going to get into any that's contention. Right, yes. Amen. I'm... Thank you for calling. I'm just not going to get into that. No, we're not, going to, in, we're not going to get into that tonight. No. This is, this is a... Uh, I just had one question, you know, that was kind of left uh, unclear for me, was that uh, the means by which one can obtain salvation, that, that was the means by, by the way someone can uh, receive salvation. Uh -huh. uh, it didn't seem like that was pointed out very clear. How old are you? I'm 21, You question no man is 78 years old, been preaching 55 years. Oh, yes, sir. But you don't have a life to do. <laughs> How old are you, son? I'm 21, sir. I'm 30. I'm 61 years that young. That doesn't matter. And I've been saved for over 36 years, even before your mother had you in your womb. Sir, do not when, touch when my camera. When was Paul saved, sir? When was Paul saved? He met Jesus. This do is... you want me to call the police and get no. you out of here? No, no, no. I'm going to keep asking you. No, no, no. How old is he saved? Can you write with me the other words that you just got the door saying, save your soul, do not forget your soul. So they haven't saved you. He, you know, sold the house. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. He said, save your soul. So they haven't saved you. So the next couple verses, they that gladly received his word were baptized, and three thousand were added that day. See, that was verse forty one. You continue to verse forty seven, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now that's the last chapter. That's the last verse of the chapter. So where is it that they're saved? Those who were baptized, added to the church, that's when they're saved. Just like Acts 3 it says, 238 says, that upon the repentance and baptism, that's when you had the church. That's when you had the church. That's just what I read. That was not the majority. There's no problem. Okay. Would we be able to ask questions afterwards? No. Nope. You don't like us answering questions? No. You put the call all of that? I don't believe we'll do that. Yeah. All that's going to say you don't like to answer questions is what I'll say. Okay. Don't get out of school that far. Come on, don't talk now. Maybe you are. No, we can call the police. No, I don't feel her. 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 And I know what to call the police. I'm going to call the police. We're going to be moving. 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 We
I don't know, but look, he scratched me. Look at that. Scratch my hand. Uh, yeah, scratch my hand. So, he said we could stay. We'll just see what happens. Friends, here's what they had in common, if you didn't pick up on it. What they had in common was they didn't want to answer questions. Jackie Poe was asked a question. He said in the assembly, I never, 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 never answer my enemies. Then he, the caller called in. He said, no, I'm not going to answer that question. Then the Baptist preacher from Fairview Baptist, the first preacher, said, you don't have the right to question me because I'm 70 years old and you're only 21. The second preacher from Fairview Baptist told Micah, no, you can't question me. I've got, you know, I'm, I'm 61 years old. I was around for your mama had even had you in her womb. Now, whatever that difference I had to make. I mean, I seem to recall uh, someone who was uh, 12 asking some older people, teachers, questions. Uh, I think his name was Jesus. But anyway, I guess he didn't have a right to, he didn't know that he didn't have a right to answer questions to someone who's older than him. And then you saw this last guy, Wayne Kennard from uh, G Victory by Grace Baptist Church, who said, you're welcome to stay. After services, we always say, anybody got anything to say, I'll only talk to you about salvation. So there was the invitation. And then they locked the door and wouldn't let them back in. What that tells me is they have something in common. They don't want to answer questions. And you know what else they have in common? They always threaten the police. They always threaten to call the police. That one fellow up at Fairview Baptist, here he goes. He says, you know, uh, uh, am I going to have to call the police to get you out of here? I mean, that was, that was his threat. And then you have this guy coming up and saying, I am the police. I am the police. Well, he wasn't the police when, we got, when they got there. He wasn't the police. He may, he may be on the police force, but he wasn't there as a police officer. See? So, you know, people just throw their, their authority around when they don't get their way or when they backed into a corner. See, this is what we have in common. What they have in common is they have in common that they don't want to answer questions and they always threaten to sue. They always threaten to call the police. They always threaten, threaten, threaten. You know what? I recall in the Bible... I recall in the Bible that the only people that did the threatenings, well, let's just say the people that did the threatenings, they were not, they were not the uh, the Christians. They were they were not they were not the Christians. Uh, notice this in Acts four twenty one, and when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people for all the men glorified God with that which is done. It was the disciples who were threatened. And it was the non-Christians who were threatening. Anybody want to say who was the Christian in all these examples? 
who what? Was the Christian the person who was just asking the question, wanting to ask the question? See? The people who don't have the truth have something in common after all. They just don't want to answer questions. They're afraid. They're ashamed. They know that they can't give an answer for why they believe what they believe. So they tell you, you don't have a right to ask a question. Now, friends, can you imagine that? Not having the right to ask a question of someone who's telling you what you need to do in order to get to heaven? Someone who's leading you to heaven, supposedly, and you don't have a right to question them? I think I'd be reconsidering where I was going to church. I think I'd be re reconsidering who it was that was that was leading me. Let's go ahead and have the phone numbers up, if you will. Now, I, I submit, well, after all, that, yeah, you know, maybe they do have something in common. They have a fear of being exposed for not telling the truth. They have a fear that what is going to happen is some, some of their members are going to learn the truth and see that they are not what they say they are. You know what? That's the same problem they had in Acts 4. In Acts 4, look at this. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in the next day, for it was not even time. See, they were threatening. And they were upset. Because the people were actually learning something. And they were being led away from them. That's exactly why your preacher and your pastor is afraid to answer questions. That's why they're afraid. That's why they're scared. They know. They know that if you start asking questions, that they won't give you satisfactory answers because they won't be from the book. Because they don't know enough Bible. They don't know enough Bible to, 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 uh, to give an answer. I am talking to a preacher the other day, and he said, well, some people are intimidated to talk to me. Talking about himself. I'm not intimidated to talk to him. I'm glad to talk to him. I'll talk to you again. My friend, my neighbor, you know, let's, let's set up. Let's talk. I'm glad to talk to you. I'm glad to answer questions. I'm glad you were willing to. He was a Baptist preacher. I hope to talk to him again. I wonder if there's other preachers who are afraid to give an answer. I haven't heard back from Mr. Bob Templeton over at the Leakesville Christian Church. Now, Bob, uh, I came and brought you a... We came and sat in your Bible study uh, back in July. We talked very cordially. You intimated that you would uh, like to come on TV and we would discuss a, a biblical topic about instrumental music in the church. You said that sounded agreeable to you. I brought you a letter uh, then at the end of July and laid out some propositions, some things we could discuss. I'd like to hear back from you. If you're a member of the Leakesville Christian Church, maybe you'll ask Bob. Bob, why don't you go ahead and have a discussion with James on TV? I know some of you are watching. I know some of you are watching because you told me you did. See? So why is it that preachers won't give an answer? I hope to hear back from you. See? I hope to hear back from you. Don't, don't have that in common with all these other preachers. You may not have much in common with, with them doctrinally, but you surely don't want to have something in common with those people who won't give an answer who are afraid to give a defense for why they believe what they believe. See? So, what do you have in common? Notice this. Friends, when we get right down to what, what the Bible is saying, as members of the Church of Christ, we have all things in common because we are basing our beliefs and our doctrines, what we teach, what we practice upon this book. And we do it in such a way that it doesn't contradict what the book says somewhere else. That's why we don't, have a, we don't have a fear to give an answer. We're not afraid to give an answer. So that's why we can, that's why we can uh, teach the way we do. But notice this. In the first century, they didn't have things just similar. It was common. It was in common. In, first, in 2 Peter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained the like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. The like precious faith. Friends, when someone asks me, say, well, what, what faith are you? 
That tells me that you don't understand the common faith. See? The like precious faith, the like precious faith means everybody is a participant of the same thing. The like precious faith. We are obedient to the faith. Acts 6 and verse 7. Acts 6 and verse 7, the Bible says that the uh, a multitude, a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. See, they had the common salvation. It was a common faith. It was a faith that they all could say, yes, we've all obeyed the same thing. That makes us the same thing. See, friends, when you do the same thing to get into the same place, then you can all say you're alike. But if you do something different, then you don't wind up in the same body. That's why someone says, well, I'm a member of the Church of Christ. Well, really, how'd you get there? Well, I was baptized into, into the Church of God. No, you, you weren't, friend. You didn't wind up in the Church of Christ by being baptized into the Church of God. Well, I was baptized in a Christian. You didn't wind up in the Church of Christ by being baptized in the Christian church. You didn't obey the same form of doctrine. You weren't obedient to that same system of faith. You may have some similarities with the church you read about in the book, but you don't have things in common with it. You don't have all things common. Listen, in, in 1 Timothy 1 verse 16, Paul said, How be it for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should believe thereafter, but, uh, that we should thereafter, hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. The same pattern. See, it's all things in common. You're going to welcome the Lord. Welcome to the program. You on the air? Yeah, do you ever read your Bible? Or do you just stand there looking stupid? Sir, now do you have a question? Or are you going to show uh, how coarse you are? I just asked you a question. Do you read your Bible? Do you stand out and look stupid? I'm reading the Bible right here. Do you ever read your Bible? Nope. I stand out and watch you look stupid. Okay. Well, maybe you'll learn something if you sit here and watch me long enough. Why don't you read your Bible? This man I've ever seen. Where, 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 where do you do on Sunday? Do you ever study your Bible? Do you pretend to worship somewhere? I don't go around talking about my neighbors like you do. I don't go around putting people down like you and old Johnny. I'm your neighbor. You, I'm, I'm, your neighbor. You I'm your neighbor. You know, y'all got a problem. I'm your neighbor. Y'all got a problem. All right, come on. Let, get it out. I'll let you vent. You got a few minutes. I'm your neighbor. You're talking about me. Oh, man. I, you ain't, I, you like a dog to me, man. Just a big old fat, sloppy ass dog. All right. Well, you know, friends, if that's the best you have, you know, the, be, the best defense these guys have is the name call. Start using vulgar language, get mad, raise your voice, and the next thing you know, out comes the vulgarity. The Bible says, out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I know you have been reading your Bible, friend, because what came out of your mouth wouldn't be in the Bible. See? See, I know. I know. I have confidence that what I must be doing is right, because Jesus said the world hated him, and, and they'll hate you too. So, you know? So I don't know. You may be a member of God's pit crew or something. I don't know. You may be a member of the, the Baptist church. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you're a member of, of the church of men. Because I know, I know, friends, you're not a member of the church in the Bible. You know, you want to call, talk about me putting people down? And then you come and talk that way? You're on the word from the Lord. Yes, sir. I, I want to apologize for what that man you, called you. You, you don't you don't have to apologize to him, sir. He needs to do the apologizing. I mean, I apologize, praise God, uh, that, to forgive him for what he did say because I know that, that what's written on your screen there and what you say, it's, it's out of the Bible. And uh, I've, I've uh, done a little research. I'm not a regular church goer. As a matter of fact, I had not been two times, but I've been to uh, the Church of Christ in Danville two times, but it's been a while, but I still uh, watch your your program and uh, your sermons and everything every week, uh, you and a couple other people. And, Mark and Micah? Yeah, and uh, yeah, Mark, he's been to my house, and uh, 
<clears throat> I've got a problem, but uh, I've talked to him about it. But I really appreciate what you're doing, and I think you're you're teaching the truth. Well, I appreciate that. And it's, chapter for chapter and verse for verse, I actually believe. I mean, I don't know where these people come on uh, uh, talking all this uh, insult and talk. Can they read? Are they asking you? Can you? Uh, do you know the Bible? <laughs> right. Looks to me like they the ones that don't know. But anyway, I won't take up any more of your time. But I appreciate uh, listening. And will, watching your show. Will you do me a favor? Uh, will you do me a favor? Yes, sir. Go, go back over to uh, 120 American Legion and, and meet with those guys and get to know them a little better and study the Bible with them. Yes, sir. I'm going to have to do that. I, I know they'd be glad to see you. I, I, it's been a while since I've been over there, but thank you and you have a good night. All God right. bless you. All right. All right. Thanks for your call. You know, friends, that's, you know, I, I want to say something about quickly about what the man said. You know, he hopes God will forgive him. I know God will forgive that, that previous caller if he'll repent. You know, if he'll repent, uh, God will certainly forgive him. Uh, the question is, will he repent and uh, obey the gospel? You're on, the word, you're on the word from the Lord. Welcome to the program. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, what is this uh, pit crew being sued for? I know they have a lawsuit against them. What is this pertaining to? Being sued for? Yeah, because it was on last week. They have a lawsuit against them. Uh, I don't know. Something about somebody fell off one of their trucks or something. I, I, other than that, I don't know. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, they was working. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with what, what, what our, uh, our brethren were doing out there. Well, you know, I was uh, watching a little bit earlier. I watched the way this, uh, well, I can't call her no lady because she didn't act like no lady whatsoever, the way she conducted herself when they came up there to uh, do a little filming. Mm -hmm. She acted anything like a Christian. And uh, I'd like to make a comment, too. There's no wonder that uh, sinners don't want no part of so-called Christianity because if people call themselves Christians, act the way they do, uh, Sinners and and sinners and in, 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 in certain perspective act, act better than so-called Christians. Do. Right. So uh, people bickering and arguing, no way to lead people to Christ. And all this hate y'all have among each other, uh, it's 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 on both sides. It really is. It's a uh, hate haters, and uh, no hate will enter the kingdom of God. I guarantee. So, are that. you saying we act hateful? All of you act hateful. Well, well, sir, now. Why do you, I know you the called him before, you called him before, I know, you sir, out. you called him before, and you say I'm hateful because I talked about homosexuality. No, no, what does that got to do with anything? I, I'm saying I had a program, I did a program one time on homosexuality, you called in and called me a hater. Oh, you, well, you got me mixed up with somebody else. Well, okay. well, you, you still, you're in the same category as people who say that so, speaking the truth is hateful. Now, why is that hateful? You're, you're, you are a hater, and the Bible said that no sin will enter heaven, and hate is sin. So, so do you hate me? You do you hate me for what I do? Pass judgment on anybody else. Well, you, you're, you're past judgment on the lady. You said she wasn't acting Christian. You just passed judgment on her. Well, she didn't. Do you think Christ would act like that? Did you, did you just pass judgment on her? I asked you, did you think Christ Did you pass judgment on her? No, I asked yes, you a question. Yes, you did. You just passed judgment on her. You said she was hateful and she wasn't, Christ, wasn't Christ-like. So why, why then do, do, do you it. pretend, why do you then, hypocrite, you Mr. Hypocrite, why, why do you pretend to be so high and mighty, getting to call everybody else hateful, and then turn around and say you're not judging them? See? See how hypocritical that is? Call in, everybody's hateful, everybody's hateful. Well, you're the one that starts calling everybody a hater, you know? I love people so, that's why I'm telling the truth. So thank you very much. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes. You on the air? This is Bob Barker. Hey. Danville and Pennsylvania County. Okay. I've been sitting here listening to your uh, comments on TV for the last hour and a half. Okay. And if you all think you're coming in and attack God's uh, storehouse and the churches of this community, you won't ever succeed. No. Sir, did we say anything about coming to God's storehouse? Going to God's house. I'm in God's house every Sunday. Is that right? Well, what 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 house is that? What church are you a member of? Well, I didn't call you up to question me. 
Oh, oh, I see. You, you, you get to ask all the questions. Well, sir, if you're so afraid of being questioned, well, you know, why afraid. do you even put yourself on the radar, Mr. Bob Barker? But your guy, your are you a, pre- are you a preacher somewhere, time. Mr. Barker? Yes. Well, then what do you preach? What faith do you preach? Baptist faith? Methodist faith? I preach I'm a Methodist, and I'm very proud of it. Okay. So you're the preacher for I'm the Methodist. I'm a Methodist, and I'm very proud of it. And you're the preacher for the Methodist Church in Danville. Oh, no, no. I'm not a preacher. Okay. So, I said, so, no, I'm not a preacher. So, so are you, is your preacher so afraid of being questioned that you have to call and defend him? Or put up a defense? I can't speak, I can't speak for my preacher. So is, is your... Is the, want, and what I want to. Is the Methodist doctrine so fragile that it can't... Listen, let me get back to the subject. You're all on the wrong track when you're attaching God's uh, pit crew. And the attack Sir? that you make on the ministry in uh, Danville and Pennsylvania County. It's just unbiblical. It's uh, unheard of. Really? But y'all are getting a kick no, off of it. No, it, it, it's not unheard of. It's so I'm going to say to you, good evening, and God bless you. All right, you know, here, here's a guy that says, you know, that, you know, I get, I don't know, so we need to find out the the Methodist Church in Danville that where Mr. Barker is a is a member. That's that's the one that's a, that's afraid, and you know, if you're so afraid and and so every, and your doctrine's so fragile, why would you even call in to even try to get a defense? That that's that's what concerns me. You want to work in the Lord? How you doing, Brother Jane? I'm doing good, Eugene. Brother Jane, what gets me? Uh, these people are calling to your show, either Brother John's show, and I'm talking about the so-called Christian. The minute you try to tell them not what you are saying, but what the Bible saying or a word for the Lord, they want to disagree. They'll disagree with you, and you become the hypocrite. But yet, They'll say you judge it, but it's all right for they to judge us. Right. And I don't understand that. Yeah. Well, when when like I said, when your doctrine is so fragile that it can't be scrutinized, you do everything you can to keep people from focusing on on you. You know. Absolutely. So right. Uh, so anyway, I had a man arguing with you this while ago, and you tell him what. The word for the Lord said what the right. Bible said, right. but he don't want to accept that. Right. Eugenia, give me a wrap-up signal. All right. Give me a wrap-up signal. God so bless go. you. Th- thanks for calling. All right, friends, we've got to go. you got the wrap-up signal, but here's one thing you need to know. Here's the way you can have something in common with all Christians who ever obeyed the gospel is you obey the same word. Heard the same word. They believed the same word. They repented according to the word. They confessed Christ and they were baptized for the remission of sins as was commanded by the word and they then became a part of the same church that Christ died for. If we can assist you in any way, we want to do that. I want you to know how you can reach us again. Uh, we'll meet at 250 the Boulevard there in Eden. You can reach me at 276-340-2653 or 336-394-5721. Till next time, friends, always ask what does the Bible say and you'll always get a word from the Lord. Good night. The views expressed on this program 